hard being a stripper. Oh, yeah, it's really hard being a stripper. Um, as I was doing it, I remembered when I was down in Nelson. Alrighty, happy Hover Wednesday, everybody. This is, uh, what is it? It's the 9th of January. I missed last week uh, because what was I doing? What was it? I've been doing something every day and I can't work out what it was. Oh, that's right. This bloody thing. So this is my first homebrew Wednesday in the new brew house. I thought, it's here, I might as well start using it, um, for videoing at least, until I get it all finished for brewing. So, if you haven't seen what's been going on with the brew house, have a look at these daily videos, uh, showing what I've been doing. But anyway, happy homebrew Wednesday. Cheers. Oh yum. Christmas is over and the mail's starting to come through now. So this is some of the beer mail that I just had turned up today. So um, go through and have a look at these things. Alrighty. This one is a relay, USB controlled relay. So I wanted to have a little play with this just for controlling um, uh, some valves and just uh, hook it up to the electric brewery and see what's going to happen with that. Um, I want to be able to remotely control some bits and pieces so I just wanted to grab one of these relay controllers just to see how that worked. This one here is five um, sparklers for my beer engine. This one here is interesting. This is a quick disconnect um, that I brought from Kegworks but they've only sent me one end of it. They've forgotten to send both ends. So I've only got one end of the quick disconnect. I need this for my beer engine at work, just so they've got some nice quick plastic disconnects. But yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, actually. And this one here is a little CO2 canister and another 16 gram CO2 canister just for my kegs from the corny kegs when I'm out and about just to keep them charged. Now, there's a couple of things I just want to show. Um, I got for the love of hops. So that turned up at Christmas time. Um, I had it on pre-order for the American Home Brewers Association. Um, so that as soon as it came out I got a copy over here. Uh, I haven't had a chance to read it because other things have been taking up my time. Like at the brew house. Anyway. Um, and there was something else that I wanted to share which I thought was a really really good idea. Um, it was in Zimagy magazine. Now if you're not if you're not a member of AHA and you don't get this magazine, I suggest you join up with AHA and get this magazine. It comes out every every quarter or so. Um, and it's got recipes in it, it's got people talk, asking questions and bits and pieces and they have articles about lots of different things. And this article is about little it, it's got lots of uh, little tips about brewing. And this one here, if you can't see it properly, I'll take a photo up of it. It's the corny kegs. The corny kegs with their gas in and their, and their beer out um, connectors. It's really hard to tell which one's which. So you're reaching in there with a connector and trying to put it on. You put it on the wrong one, they get bloody stuck and you can't get the fuckers off. Okay? They're really, really tight. I've tried to feel to feel the on that's... Um, Boston it or the off and trying to you know, pull them out, put a little bit of light in there, they're really hard to see. Well, anyway, this guy, what's his name? Steve Patz, painted the beer out red. Isn't that fucking easy? That's such a good idea. Okay, now when you open it up, you can clearly see this is the one that the beer one goes on. Simple, no accidentally hooking up the wrong connector on a corner key. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, um, DMS, wanted to have a quick little chat about DMS, so here's a quick little chat about DMS. I won't get into it a lot, but I have, um, there, there's a way that you can get rid of it. So, what it is, is it's caused um, when you do a boil, you're generating DMS, and DMS is evaporating out. And that's why you never have a lid on your kettle when you're boring, because it's just going to catch all the DMS and it's going to come back into your beer. And DMS is that, um, it's that 
excuse me, that vegetable corn, um, canned corn taste. So it's just a byproduct of heat, of heating the whoa, wind. Not a byproduct of heating the wind. It's a byproduct of heating grains and vegetables and stuff like that. That's why vegetables happen. But you don't want it in your beer. Um, so as the steam comes up, you want that steam to go away. And as the steam carries the DMS away, you're all good. Um, now that's why it's really important that when you uh, finish your boil and you're cooling down, you cool down really fast. Because DMS is still being produced, but there's not as much steam. So if there's not as much steam carrying the DMS away, it's staying in your beer. So DMS is still being produced all the way up to 70 degrees Celsius, I think. You're pretty sure it's around the 70 degree mark. So you've got that little period there where you can actually form quite a lot of DMS in your beer. And you don't want that. Um, you want to cool it down as fast as you can so it stops producing it. Anyway, if you do end up with DMS in your beer, you can get rid of it by um, uh, scrubbing it out. So you get the beer, and you get a cloth, Scrub the beer. No, just kidding. Uh, what you do is, if you've got a corny kick, you swap the um, pipes on the corny kick around so that you put your your gas in has the long pipe and your beer out has the short pipe. And then what you do is you fire gas through the beer, for a CO2 through the beer, and it all bubbles up through the beer. And as that CO2 bubbles up through the beer, it grabs the DMS and it takes it out. And that's how you get rid of DMS. So you can keep on doing that, keep on cycling CO2 through your beer to bubble away all that DMS. And it will clean it up if you ended up if you have ended up with DMS in your beer. So I thought that was a really handy tip because a lot of people sort of end up with that sort of taste thinking, oh how do I get rid of it? Well, here you go, you can scrub it out with CO2. And also, I haven't seen the hops in a while. So we'll shoot up, we'll have a gander at the hops. Alrighty, here we are in the overgrown hop house. These things have just gone nuts. Actually, everything's going nuts. There's a big weed. Oh, oh there's a chicken. Oh, chicken. Um, yep. I just pretty much let them go. And they're taking over. It's a massive, great big plant over here. That is starting to crawl up over the side as well. It must have fallen down from... Oh, look at them all. They're coming out everywhere. All right. Look at that. That's a friggin' aphid. Right there. I need more spiders in here. It's a little bugger. I haven't done any more in the brew house today. I thought I'd stop and I'll do a homebrew Wednesday video. I said I was going to have the door cleaned, um, paint stripped. It's hard being a stripper. Oh, it's really hard being a stripper. Um, as I was doing it, I remembered when I was down in Nelson, when I was 20, near around about 20, I had a flat, and um, the flat was up above a shop um, at the end of town where all the pubs were. It was great. Um, and it was a high stud, and it had all this woodwork, and it was all painted. And I said to the landlord, oh look, you know, I can strip that paint off, and um, if you don't, you know, if we don't have to pay rent for a week or so or something like that, he goes, yeah, no, go for it. Tidy it up, make it all look nice. So I started stripping it with paint stripper. Fuck, I should have remembered. It's bloody hard work, you know. Paint stripper just doesn't take all the paint off instantly. It takes the first layer off. The second layer is sort of sucked into the wood. You've got to scrub it. And then you've got to try and get that scrubbed in paint stripper out. So best thing to do is dip stripping, where you take the whole door to a place and they dip it in a, in a pool of acid, take it out and it's all clean. But I will keep on working on it because it is a very nice uh, looking Remy door um, and hopefully it's going to come up really nicely. But anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to, to quickly say. Oh, quick shout out to um, Harry Brewer 69. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on you buddy, okay? Seeing I've inspired you to start your own brew house and get your own brew house working. I'm going to expect updates every week. Now, actually, let's wait a couple of months until the snow stops because you might be a bit cold out there. It's winter, I think, in the UK at the moment. Don't know whether it's snowing around your place. I wouldn't want you out there getting frostbite or anything like that while you're working this year. But I do want to see some updates. And I'm glad that you liked um, the brew house uh, videos, and there will definitely be, be some more brew house videos coming up. Shout out to uh, Tiny from uh, Off Tap Brewing. 
uh, hope he's all good over Australia and the smoke and the fires and the heat 42 degrees centigrade in Sydney he's not in Sydney but um, it's starting to affect Australia quite a lot we've got lots of bushfires I hope everything's fine for you over there um, chubby gut and blue da -da 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 -da. chubby glutton brew cheers mate I fired you some beer um, I saw the video of it today that you opened it up I'm looking forward to your feedback on that also tiny I fired you some beers as well and you know you got those beers turning up so I'm looking forward to getting a little bit of feedback and looking forward to seeing your beers come back as well so I can taste some different beers but anyway cheers have yourself another one